so hello everyone. So hello everyone, thanks for coming to this hour session. And I will be presenting our work on a point set generation network for 3D object reconstruction from a single image. Uh, so look at this picture. So what can you see? So as a human, we have the innate ability of monotonous mono mono 3D perception. We will not only see the two D configurations in the figure, but also we see the depth, the shape, and spatial relationships between the entities. And this is what we want our machines to do. The, our task is to get a 3D reconstruction of the whole object's shape you know, from a single image. We want to build internally a 3D representation of the object. So how is this possible? So monocular 3D perception is one of the earliest problems in computer vision. And methods like this shape from shading is back to us, so that's 40, more than 40 years ago. But uh, our approach is different. We do not rely solely on any emanation or geometric cues. Our approach is a data-driven solution. That is, we want to present our new network with a large collection of 3D shapes in the hope that it can learn a prior of generally how a 3D object should look like. And we, when it sees a new image, it can retrieve from its knowledge base an object's shape to, to give us the answer. And this is what the system is like. We build a large 3D object database called the ShapeNet. And we render from this, this, this object models some 2D images. A convolution neural network is trained to learn to predict from this single image what this 3D model should look like. Uh, the shape data set contains 200,000 shapes from 2,000 categories. And from this, we render 10 million images with ground truths. Yeah. And this method may seem simple, but there's one core issue. How should we represent a 3D object in neural networks? First, the representation must be powerful enough to describe objects of all kinds, not only those ball-like or planar-like. And also, it must be useful as a network output, means that we must be able to backpropagate from this kind of representation. And this kind of problem is not discussed seriously in the deep learning community. Our solution is the, it's called point cloud or an order point set of XYZ coordinates. Here's a running example of uh, how it works. And on the left is the uh, input image with a car indicated by a segmentation mask. And on the right is the output of our neural network. It's a description of a 3D shape that covers both sides, including the invisible side. And there are four loads in the reconstruction results, even if only three of them are actually visible in the input image. A fundamental issue in this task is that there's some inherent ambiguity in the problem. So take the shape generic example. So can, can you think of this shape? Or which side is it facing? Maybe you have an answer now. But yeah, there are also other possibilities. And during the training of the network, this kind of uncertainty should always affect this behavior. And there's an example, there's a phenomenon of this problem. So in the majority of previous methods, they use the volumetric representation of the object. Each voxel records whether it belongs to the object. And they often miss the same structures, like the legs of the table. Why? Because from the input image, the neural network really don't know what the exact location of this kind of lines should be. And when you compute the laws, you find that its best strategy is to not assign any voxel to the lag at all. In contrast, in our method, the problem is elevated because the small change in the position of the lag only incurs small change in the XYZ coordinates. So our reconstructions are in general more complete compared to the previous work. And this is the pipeline of our whole system. 
and there are two key, key issues. First, how should we design the loss function to compare the ground truth with the network's prediction? And second, how, after all, can we do the network to output point sets? Uh, as for the choice of the loss function or the distance metric, first, it has to be robust to preservations on the same structure so that we can preserve the group. And also, it must be differentiable and computable so that we can plug the thing to a neural network training framework. Uh, let's think about how to define the distance between an order point sets. The key challenge is that they are an order. So when we are computing distance, we must find the order to align them, or in order to find the correspondence. And correspondence is a big challenge in any video task. So uh, one naive way is to assign to each point in one set the nearest neighbor in the other set, and we sum the distances of the nearest neighbors. This is called the chamfer distance. One issue about chamfer distance is that it cannot capture the mismatch in the point density. For example, in this kind of two sets, the, the right set and the blue set, the chamfer distance is very low, but they are very different. So one way to work around this is to use the earth more distance in which we ensure that the, uh, the point must be assigned to a unique point in the other set. This can be computed by minimum weighted match. Uh, both distances work in the system, but we do observe the difference when the network is trained by different loss functions. For example, when the network is trained by EMD, we see that the, the, the wall is much cleaner, but it also tends to distort some of the parts of the shape. And for the network trained by the chamfer distance, the result is, is sharper sometimes, but also splashy. For example, on the back side of the wall, which is totally invisible. We want to ask why does this happen? And we attribute this problem to the so-called mean shape behavior of the loss functions. This network is uncertain about something, and because it is trained by loss minimization, it learns to give a mean output that has the minimum sum of distances to all possible candidates. For example, in the first example, the radius of a circle is unknown, and we, if we only let the network output one shape, when the EMD is used, it will give a circle with medium radius. And when we use the chamfer distance, the minimizer turns out to be a very splashy circle, as seen in the previous figure. And another example is uh, it's a wall with an item appearing at one of the four locations. And if we don't know which side it is really appearing, when we use the EMD to train the network, it gives a distorted wall. On contrast, when we use the chamfer, the wall is much cleaner, but the atom disappears and degenerates into four straight points. And this can partly explain the different behaviors of the networks trained by different loss functions. And so the output of the network is affected by the characteristic of the loss function. And in practice, a combination of EMD and CD must be used to get the best result. And so go back to the whole picture. So after discussing the loss function, the second issue is how the network should be built. So one motivation is that there are many local structures in the object shapes. So we have to somehow build a structure that can reuse the local parts, like the convolutional layers. And also, there are always some intricate parts that cannot be, be classified into any of the smooth planar parts. So we build a two-branch architecture. In the first branch, it is a up-convolutional or deconvolutional architecture. And in the second is a fully connected branch. We hope that the first branch can learn the smooth parts of the object, and the second branch learns the non-smooth one. 
the results are concatenated as a ray. So this is the part of the better two branch. The blue points belong to the deconvolutional branch, and the white points belong to the fully connected branch. Because it can be seen that the blue points really capture the large and planar parts of the object, while the right points capture some uh, special or uh, irregular parts. When you think about what the, the role of deconvolution in the network, we see that it is really a 2D parameterization of that object. So the output of the deconvolution layers is a, a 2D grid of 3D points, which is actually a way to wrap or unfold an object into a plane. Uh, we me measure the performance of our algorithm quantitatively, and it is shown that compared to the previous work, it's 3R2 in CCV16, the error is reduced by a large amount. And here are some qualitative real world examples. These photos are taken six hours before the CPR submission deadline. Uh, so hopefully, we don't have too much time to cheat. Yeah, and you can see that the raw structures of the objects are captured well. And for the toys, they are completely out of the training categories. But it's still get reasonable outputs. So in summary, we find that the point cloud can be used to synthesize 3D objects. And the geometric, geometric tools, the points and distances, are helpful for learning. We also we advocate for the study of the point set generation problem in the deep learning community. Uh, code out available on GitHub. Uh, thank you for questions. Very, very impressive work. So I think uh, we have our time for questions. If you have questions, there's a microphone uh, over there. OK, I guess uh, I'll start. So uh, this is a uh, very impressive result uh, from a single image. I just wonder, like, have you thought about using a sparse set of like, multi-view images? Any extensions, and uh, how will you change the pipeline? Mm. So multi-view reconstruction and monocular reconstruction is totally two different problems. So in the monocular, uh, so in the multi-view setting, we have some geometric cues to use, like the hyperbolic line or stereo matching. But in the monocular one, everything comes out of the imagination of the network. Okay. So we treat them completely as two different tasks. Okay, if uh, there's uh, no further questions, then 